This year was my first time back in Cologne since pre-Covid times, the last time CSGO would likely be hosted there, and it all made the opening ceremony on the Friday kind of a big deal for me. To walk back into the Alaxis Arena and to be immediately hit with such a massive visual and audio spectacle is something that YouTube videos and streams simply cannot do justice to. I'm not even sure why I tried with this video's intro, honestly. The Cathedral of Counter-Strike Calls. Now this event also took place last year, which was when it first returned post-Covid and all of you that I talked to said that it was an absolute banger. But, partly thanks to Brexit, I had to wait the best part of four months to get my passport renewed and I missed it. And it broke my heart. So I ensured that nothing would stop me from experiencing it this year. I made it, and it didn't disappoint. Although it was a bit different this time around. It took place in August, whereas the previous ones I attended were earlier in the year, and coinciding with the Gay Pride event in Cologne, which meant the whole city felt like a massive celebration for the CSGO weekend. But this year, without all that, it was noticeably quieter and much less rainbowy. And the weather wasn't so good either, with it being frequent rain instead of the usual blue skies and scorching sunshine. And yet the event still didn't disappoint. The Lanxus Arena was full of atmosphere and I met hundreds of lovely, lovely people, renewing my confidence in Counter-Strike's community and in the game's ability to impress on the big screen. Not everybody who attends is a die-hard fan of esports or even a fan of Counter-Strike. Many are coming along with their partners or their children, and for those people I suppose the fear is that they won't understand what is going on or which team they should support. I mean, I know the game well, but I haven't followed the pro scene in years. And these days my knowledge of the teams is so bad it's probably worse than useless. I thought Cloud9's players were American, and was surprised to hear of Device's return to the game because I didn't even know he had retired. It doesn't really matter though, you quickly get the gist of the teams once you're there and you've spoken to a few people. But the question is, which teams do you support? At least most people get a pro team from their country to cheer for, but being English, I've never had that luxury, and I can't exactly cheer for the casters. So I have to pick the one team with possibly one British player in, and failing that I'll go for the Australians or the underdogs, or for that team with that one player who said something nice about me that one time, and so on. I suppose at the end of the day, your reason for supporting a team doesn't really matter. It just matters that you pick a team to support because it makes it more fun to watch the event when you want one side to win. Something the Cologne event does well is to have plenty of entertainment and things to do around the event, meaning you'll have lots to do even when matches aren't on. DHL had a strong presence, with their vivid colours everywhere and all sorts of hosted activities they had integrated into and around the event. Their Effie bot driving about and gifting people stuff and generally getting tormented by curious passers-by. There was a tent around the back full of computers hosting CS2 matches, so anybody curious about it who doesn't yet have access to the beta could try it here for themselves. One highlight for me was bumping into Daniel, the balloon guy again. I first met him in America years ago, and he provided this event with all kinds of weird and wonderful balloon sculptures that you've probably seen around the arena, and I hope more events discover how incomplete they are without a balloon guy making ops and AKs for everybody. Despite the bad weather, outside still had plenty of activities on. Gone was the Mario Knife Cart Arena, but given the bad weather it would have been a very wet affair had it been on. So instead we got the Moller Miche stand, which gave out flavoured milk drinks for free. I spent a good amount of time in the tent outside which hosted 5v5 games of CSGO. I even participated in one, losing 8-1, so it felt just like matchmaking for me. Luckily nobody seemed to recognise me. There were also all sorts of PCs and laptops set up, which I wish was done more often because there's no substitute for trying out new hardware in person. It was a really great opportunity to test out some cutting edge stuff. There are all sorts of high refresh rate monitors and super powerful desktops and laptops. You're probably familiar with brands like GeForce and Radeon, but Intel's Arc lineup is relatively new and unknown. So by having a bunch of computers set up running these sorts of components, it was a great opportunity to show people that they do exist and can actually run popular competitive games like Counter-Strike and Carpool 2000. One thing I don't recall seeing anywhere were any AMD components. There wasn't the usual after party next to the gay pride party, but instead there was this thing hosted at the very base of the cathedral, which is where everybody ended up going on Saturday night. It was pretty crowded, though I heard that last year was even more so. It was a great opportunity to meet lots of people, and even some pro players. The other two nights ended up being at the Meltdown Bar, now known as Lost Level. This is a bar slash gaming arena with a bunch of consoles set up around the sides for people to play old classics on. The Sunday night featured a bus service taking people to the after party which was to be hosted there by one of the pro teams, which I shan't mention the name of here. Now if you're like me or anybody else who attended this after party, you'd assume that because the after party is named after a team, that the team hosting it would show up there. An area was cordoned off for them to sit, people waited around for them to turn up, but they didn't show up. Probably too busy celebrating their win elsewhere. 
So I hijacked the whole thing and made it into the Three Clicks Philip after party and there is nothing you can do to stop me. If you search for the official opening ceremony online, you'll get this video, set on the final day, where Machine does his best Harry Potter impersonation and orchestrates a bunch of famous Counter-Strike clips from the past 10 years. Not only did this performance remain fitting to the cathedral theme, but it was also a great way to end the era, because this is likely to be the last time that a CSGO event is ever hosted in the Lanxess Arena. You might think I'd be all nostalgic and teary-eyed about this. But I'm not. Not in the slightest. It has been a very happy and successful era for both myself and for Counter-Strike, and it's great for Global Offensive to end on such a high note. But I'm already looking to the future. Everything we hold dear about the Counter-Strike experience will be back next year, and hopefully better than ever. But Source 2 will see to it that the rest will receive a much needed facelift, a new layer of PBR polish, and will serve as a new base from which the game and the community can grow from over the coming years and decades. I can't wait to see what the future holds for Counter-Strike.